Hi, this is John Akoniak, and welcome to another session of your path to financial success. Uh, today, we're going to talk about taxes, insurance, and some financial tools for you. First of all, um, we're going to go through a little bit on taxes. Taxes, never fun, never fun to talk about, uh, but we all need to pay them. Uh, we're going to go through a little bit on insurance and personal risk management, and then talk about some tools you can use to help find answers to some of your financial questions. So first of all, taxes. Um, so there's, in general, there's, there's various tax rates, but in general, there's, there's two big categories. One is ordinary income. And this is on the earnings that you make, your wage, um, you pay tax rate. And if you look down below, the tax rate on the federal basis goes up to 37%. Um, you add state in there and you add Medicare and Social Security taxes and, you know, for high level income, you're paying 50% or more in taxes. Um, so there's also uh, another form of taxes and that comes on your investments. Now, your investments um, typically have, if it's a long-term capital gain investment, meaning that you've held an investment for more than a year and you have a capital gain on it, you have a preferential tax treatment. Uh, what does that mean? That means that the government is actually incenting you. They want you to make a long-term investment uh, that's good for business, it's good for the economy. And as a result, they give you a lower tax rate for that. That tax rate at its max is 23.8%. So much better than 37% at the federal level. So as you as you can as you make money and you start to have an investment portfolio, you want to think about ways where you can drive your income to be more investment focused. Not that you want to give up your ordinary income, but you want to drive it to an area where you're going to pay a lower tax rate. So I have seen many people make costly mistakes because they were unaware of the tax implications. So I work in wealth management. So I help people make good tax decisions as well, well as build investment portfolios. So one person that I spoke with last month, he was not a client of ours. But he was telling us how he recently sold some of his company stock. Well, we looked at what he did, and he had a choice of selling two different batches of stock. Unfortunately, he picked the wrong batch. <clears throat> the one he picked cost him an extra $700,000 in taxes. Yes, that's right, an extra $700,000 in taxes because he picked the wrong batch to sell. Um, he was unaware of the difference between the two. He unfortunately did not have good guidance and it cost him dearly. So rather unfortunate, but your mistakes around taxes, taxes are gonna be the biggest source of leakage of, of your wealth throughout your lifetime. So you do need to be very cognizant of taxes, tax rates, and make sure you are working with somebody who's knowledgeable, a good CPA that can help you. So that's all we'll dig into on taxes today. Um, let's move to risk management. So risk management is basically protecting your personal information, your social security number, your account numbers, driver's license numbers. It's trying to protect this information so others don't get it. Obviously, we're seeing a lot of identity theft, and this is something that we all want to avoid. So some basic things to do to take advantage of that is shred or destroy your bank or credit card statements. Anything with an account number, your bank account, your brokerage account, shred those documents. You don't want your account number getting out there with your name on it and your address. It gives people enough information to start to steal your identity. Don't provide, don't carry your social security card with you. 
unless you act absolutely need it that day to show to an employer. Otherwise, don't carry it with you. Don't provide your personal information via email. Emails can be hacked. So whenever I send something like my date of birth or an account number and an email, I send it securely. And there are secure forms of email that encrypt it and makes it much more difficult, if not impossible, for people to, to break into. And then also protect your credit. When you see people that once somebody gets your social security number, they go and they open up credit cards in your account, in your name. So what you can do is you can go to the credit reporting bureaus, and there's three of them. Uh, go to them and ask them to put a freeze on your credit. Now, if you need to apply for credit, all you need to do is contact the credit bureau and have them unfreeze your account for a specific period of time. I just went through a refinancing for my home and I have all of my credit locked, which means that if somebody tries applying for credit, they will get denied because the credit bureaus will not share credit information and a credit card or other companies will not open up an account in my name unless they're able to see my credit first. So it's a good way to protect yourself um, to, to make that freeze. Um, next is insurance. So there is insurance for everything. Uh, there's insurance for your health, there's insurance for your car, for your house. You can get insurance for your phone, uh, life insurance, disability insurance. There's a whole slew of them. So what do you need? Like, do you really need all this insurance? Well, really what insurance is meant to provide, it's meant, it's meant to provide coverage for you should you incur really a catastrophic loss and you're unable to pay for the amount of that loss. So, so think about somebody's house burning down. Wow, a house is pretty expensive. It's gonna be hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not more, to rebuild that. Not many people have that lying around. That's where insurance comes in. Now, perhaps if you buy a TV and you, they're gonna to try to sell you insurance for that TV, but do you really need it for that $500 TV that you just bought? Do you really need to pay $100 for insurance? Probably not. Probably not. Um, first of all, it's a brand new TV. If you're buying it from a store. Um, your TV should last a little while, and it's not highly likely that it's going to get damaged uh, unless you do something crazy in your house. You're always playing football in the house. Perhaps you do need it, um, but that is a call for you to make. You know, you should know kind of your own risk profile and and determine whether or not you need it. So let me give you an example on life insurance. So life insurance, um, only 3% of life insurance policies ever pay a claim. That's great for life insurance companies because they don't have to pay out very much. They collect their premiums and uh, they make a very good profit. Uh, does that mean that you don't need life insurance? Well, mm, no, it's not what it means. Um, it means that mm, you, chances are you're not gonna use it and you need to determine for yourself in your family situation, whether or not it makes sense for you to have that insurance policy. If you have a, a young family and mm, if your income disappears, your family needs that to stay in their house or continue to live a decent life, yes, then it probably makes sense to have life insurance. If you're young and single, and if you pass away, no one's gonna miss the income that you were making, you don't need life insurance. So one thing that I can tell you is that life insurance, as well as many other insurance policies, are more frequently sold than bought. Now, what does that mean? 
Well, it means that they are sold because there is a salesperson on the other end who is making a commission for selling it. And that salesperson is doing what's in their best interest. They are trying to sell a policy, whether you need it or not. So <clears throat> what you really want to do is you want to be on the buyer side. And you should determine whether or not you need insurance. You can listen to what they have to say, but you always need to take what they say with a grain of salt if they are financially incented to sell something to you. So that's a, it's a big concept. You want to buy rather than be sold something. So that takes you through insurance. And then let's jump to some financial tools. So these are just tools that are available typically on the web that provide some great sources of information for you should you need them regarding various financial topics. If you think about budgeting and creating a budget for yourself and some credit monitoring, Mint is a great resource. Uh, if you need overall financial recommendations, um, this could be from mm, financing a car to a house, mm, what kind of credit card should you be getting, Nerd Wallet is a good choice. If you want some just general investment advice, personal capital is a good source. Other websites that provide good financial information, Investopedia, Money Under 30, Kiplinger's, The Balance, and on Instagram, uh, you can get good information from Elevest and Personal Finance, Finance Club. So those are different financial tools. And let's wrap up with some words of wisdom. So as we wrap up this series, there are some key takeaways that everyone should have. So first of all, live a sustainable life, which means that you should be living a lifestyle that is adequately supported by your income. So I'm not talking economic or environmentally sustainable, but something that is sustainable on a long-term basis based on your income. You are ultimately responsible for your well-being. You won't be able to rely on the government or others. When anyone is giving you financial advice, understand what their motives are. Are they doing it for your well-being or are they doing it for their well-being? Make sure you understand that. You need to look out for yourself first and make sure that you're doing what's needed to live a prosperous life. Set smart goals for yourself and write down those goals and pay yourself first from your income. This means save money, either in your savings plan or your retirement plan before you pay your bills. This is the fastest road to building wealth and achieving financial independence. And I'm fairly confident that most of you, if not all, want to one day achieve financial independence. Thank you very much.